At the end of the last movie, I gave you an assignment to try for yourself. That is to take everything that we learned about find subject by ID and to create your own version of find page ID. Hopefully that went well for you. We'll take a look at the results to make sure that we have the same thing, and then we'll talk about how we can refactor the page selection. So the first thing we're going to look at is functions.php, and I've got find page by ID. It's a pretty simple function for you to create because you can actually just take find subject by ID, copy it, and then just change every instance of the word subject to say page instead. It's exactly the same thing. And in fact, this is the same thing that you use every time you want to read back a single record from the database. Find whatever it is by ID is going to look very similar to this. So this is a good template for you to keep around and reuse. If you don't have the same thing as me, go ahead and pause the movie and you can copy all of this down. I'm going to go ahead and move over to manageContent.php, where I've also done some copy and pasting. I took my current subject and the menu name display, and I used it down here as current page. Again, just swapping in every time I see subject, swapping in page. I took one additional step. I moved the H2 inside my if statement so that it can be conditional as well. Instead of just saying manage content, it now says manage subject or manage page. I thought that was a useful improvement because otherwise, as I click around, I don't know whether I'm on a subject or a page. Menu name doesn't give that away. Menu name is the same for both. So now we can tell whether we're looking at a page or a subject. Okay, so again, you can pause the movie and copy that down if you need to, but we're now ready to talk about how we can refactor this. So one of the first things that I notice about this is just that there's a lot of code up here for selecting the page, and then more code that's down here for selecting the page. And I think we can clean up the relationship between those two a little bit. The first thing I notice is that I'm doing this setting of current subject here. I'm doing it right as I'm about to use it. I like to do these finding and setting up of variables as early on the page as possible to get them set up and to keep them out of the display or the presentation of the information. So if possible, it's not always possible, sometimes we're inside a loop or something and we, we have to do it down there, but when possible I'm going to put it up here instead. This is the same conditional statement, right? We're checking to see if the subject is set. If it's set, then let's set select subject ID and let's find the current subject. Let's jump back down here. We can do the same thing for page. I'll remove all of that. I'll put this up at the top. We'll select our page ID and then we'll set current page right afterwards. Now I think that's an improvement. I think this is a little cleaner down here. We're just dealing with the display of these different things. Now I also notice though that selected subject ID seemed to make a lot of sense before, right? We were checking to see for the presence of selected subject ID, but we're really just working with current subject. Why can't we just check for that? Right, current subject is either going to exist or it's going to be null. So let's use that instead. So if it's null, then this Boolean will evaluate to false. Now you could use is null or if not is null there, but this works just the same. This Boolean expression, if we have a current subject, then do this. If we have a current page, then do that. The only problem is we need to watch for our default values because here we have a subject. We want to make sure that we still also have a current page set. Null, and let's do the same thing for current subject, equals null, and here as well, we're going to do current subject equals null, or current page equals null. Okay, so now we've cleaned all that up, and now it should still work. Let's just make sure our refactors still work. We reload the page. We click around and nothing has changed. Okay, so that's a good refactor. So this, to me, looks a little cleaner down here now. But I've kind of made a mess up here at the top. This is a, a big jumble now. At least I'm doing it all in one place. But I think it can be cleaned up a little bit. And I'm noticing, for example, that I'm setting selected subject ID here so that I can just reuse it here. Why not just use this value? The only other time that I'm using selected subject ID is down here in the navigation. We'll get to that in just a second. For now, let's go ahead and just take this Let's replace it. Let's say, all right, we're going to use that there instead, and we'll do the same thing here with selected page ID. Now we're on the way to actually getting rid of selected subject ID and selected page ID. Let's get rid of those. Right? So we just go directly to it. Just take this value, send it in here. It's going to do MySQL real escape string, so we don't need to worry about the safety of it or anything like that. It's going to get escaped. So now we're going to just have either a current subject or a current page. 
this will work except for the navigation. Let's just comment out our navigation for a second. Let's just try it. Let's come back over here and let's reload the page. You see that it works with page one, page three, or subject three, right? I'm just typing it in the URL up here since I don't have a navigation. Problem is when we add the navigation to it, this navigation wants these IDs. So how can we send it an ID? Well, we could just send it the same value. We could say, let's drop that in, get subject, get page, right? There we go. That should work, right? We're just sending those same values into navigation. Let's reload the page. Oh, wait a minute. Notice here, I get a warning that something hasn't been initialized. That's because one of these values doesn't exist. At the moment, I'm on a subject page, so get page doesn't exist. It goes to look for and it's not there. We're moved outside of this very important is set, checking to see if it is set or not. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna stay inside of this is set. So what can we do instead? Well, we could send current page. We could say current page and it should then have an ID, right? And same thing for current subject. Now we're gonna have the same problem. In some cases, current subject is going to exist and some pages current page is gonna exist, but they're not gonna exist at the same time. Now we actually might be able to call a key on null and have it not blow up on us, but that's beside the point. It's really not a good programming practice. Instead, let's just pass in the current subject and the current page, whatever they may be. They may be an associative array or it may be null and we'll just handle it inside navigation. Navigation will expect to get one or the other. It'll either expect an associative array or it'll expect null. Let's just close that up. Let's go back over to our functions and make that change. So now, instead of navigation taking two arguments, the currently selected subject ID, we're gonna say the current subject array or null. And this one will be the current page array or null. And then let's make that change here so that we're expecting either a subject or a page. And then just here, we just have to check, right? We may be getting back a subject, which we can call ID on, or we may be getting a page that we can call ID on. However, we might not, we might be getting null. So let's just add an additional condition here that says if subject and subject ID is equal to subjects. So if we have a subject and if the subject ID is equal to subject ID. Now notice what we just did here. This should be a subject array and page array to keep them separate from what we're using inside our loop. Array and down here call this one page array and we'll just check also for page array being present so if we have a page array and if page id is equal to page arrays id all right a little cleaner let's take a look let's see if it works still come back here and reload our page there we go now we're clicking around and we're getting the exact same results we've made things different in our code but the functionality is the same that's what we want to do when we're refactoring i find this all to be a little cleaner and easier to use Let's do one last refactor here before we leave this. I'm just gonna take all of this and I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna go back to my functions.php and I'm gonna make a new function for it. So let me just take find navigation and right below it, let's right here, let's do function find selected page. It's not gonna take any arguments because it is going to use get and then it's going to set values based on that. This is a super global, it's available everywhere. We don't have to call global scope on it. So find selected page is all we're gonna to have to call now from over here, and it's gonna do all that work for us, right? So we've just wrapped it all up. We don't need to echo it or anything, we just need to tell it to find selected page, and what that's gonna do is set values for us for current page. Let's come back over here. There's one issue though, we need to return either current page and current subject, right? We could do that down here, return. We could return an array and then catch those values. Or we can just declare them as being global. That will essentially say that these are in the global scope, that that's where we're working on them from. 
global subject and current page. Even though they didn't exist before they got here, it's okay. We're creating them in the global scope. We're referring to them in the global scope. So here when they get defined, it's the global scope where we're using them. And that means that they're still available to us once we leave the function. So let's just close all that up now. And let me just put a return here so that separates it. Let's go back over to Firefox. Let's reload the page. Let's click around and everything still works as expected. Notice how much cleaner that is. All of that business gets taken care of here in this function. And we can really focus on just the display here. Really just focus on that aspect of it. The presentation of the data that we've already set up. I think this is a real improvement. Okay, now that we have our subject and page reading down, we're ready to move on to the next part of CRUD, which is create.